Call the meeting to order at 7.02. First thing is to approve the minutes from May 10th. Make a motion to approve the minutes from May 10th. Give me a second. Roll call me, yes. Lynn. Yeah. You weren't here last time, right? But you can oh, still prove the minutes. Yeah, never mind. You can still prove you can still prove the minutes, she right? Can. Yeah. I Phil? Can. Yes. Livia? Yes. Bill? Yeah. Mary? Yeah. Damien? Yeah. Keith? Yes. Missy, you on yet? And Chris. Yes. Okay. Uh, Shelly, you want to do the financials? Sure. I hope everybody can hear me okay. I am on my phone. Yep. Uh, so there were seven, 17 warrants signed since last meeting uh, by Mr. Holla. The total was $1,621,397.33. I sent out the expense reports for the general fund and school choice through May 31st. I'm happy to take individual line item questions if you have them, uh, but did just want to mention a few accounts that are currently, um, some are over, some are under budget. So uh, we are looking at having a pretty significant balance this time of year, which is somewhat normal. Usually we're, we are doing some spending and making other adjustments on various accounts to make sure that we're within e &D requirements. Um, one of the most significant factors right now that is leaving uh, a greater amount of money in the budget than normal is our health insurance. Uh, when we built the budget for FY22, health insurance rates were not out yet, which is typically the case. Uh, they're usually behind us for um, putting rates out. So I built in a cost of living adjustment on that, anticipating we may have uh, an increase and rate stayed steady. So we had an increase in the budget automatically for that and we won't spend those funds. So that's where some of our significant overages in the budget is right now. Uh, so we are spending down. Um, George is working with uh, Scott Dredge and Sarah Mitchell as well as department heads to spend some of those funds on educational materials, supplies and instructional equipment. Uh, we're also gonna be getting some new desks for classrooms. Uh, some library furniture, and then some small kitchen equipment. So we are still analyzing, you know, looking top to bottom to see, you know, what we can spend and, and where our overages are and making sure that we are covering those overages if they do exist in line items. Um, but given the existing budget, Darius and I are recommending that uh, we spend about $100,000 of our excess budget funds, uh, 50000 to be reserved for the tennis court project, which we are currently as you know, working with Berkshire Design Group on the design and analysis of the tennis court with an estimated cost of around 200,000 to fully renovate. So we're recommending putting 50,000 away for that project in the future. And then uh, we've talked repeatedly, I think Phil has brought up multiple times in multiple years that the school really should be putting money into the capital stabilization fund. Uh, I think we're in a position to do that currently, given that excess funds in the health insurance line. Uh, and that would be to put away for future capital savings, whether it's small projects or if we start to have a goal to build up this fund over the years, um, paying for things such as the boiler, you know, if we do have further issues there that need replacement. Um, so we would be looking for school committees uh, vote on that just to move ahead with those two pieces. And then uh, the last thing I'll say is that, you know, I'll continue analyzing accounts uh, and doing adjustments to reclassify expenditures, which is customary practice at this time of year. Um, but I'm happy to take questions and open up further discussion around the use of those funds for the tennis courts and the capital stabilization funds. Have they got questions? So, so I'll, go, I'll go ahead and ask Shelly since um, since you brought up my name, I'm very, very pleased about the capital stabilization fund uh, creation or and or breathing life into a long dormant one. Um, but I, so but just I was just wondering what was your what was your estimate of health insurance increase? What did it turn out to be? And what was the savings? on that line item? Uh, so I think we had estimated uh, about a 
two and a half percent COLA increase, which I don't have in front of me what that amount is. Um, but we are going to see probably about one hundred and fifty to two hundred thousand dollars in savings um, from the COLA. But there's also been changes in our number of enrollees, which has reduced our amount. We did an analysis of that a couple months back, and we currently have less people enrolled than we have in previous years. So that's giving us some excess funds there as well. And, you know, I mean, it's good to have those savings because if you look at certain lines, we do have significant overages, for example, in the um, buildings and facilities improvement line. Um, you know, we're over by a significant amount there. So, you know, we're fortunate to have the cushion, but it's certainly um, more money than we would have in a normal year, especially in that benefits line. Any thoughts to open? Yeah. Good point. What I was couldn't it, Bill? hear that. I'm sorry. OPEB. Funding somebody feeding the OPEB beast that we know is hiding in the bushes. Yeah, Darius and I hadn't talked about that, but that's certainly something that we could have discussion about and and put some funds in there. We haven't put anything in since we opened that fund, which I believe it has about 115 thousand in there currently. Of course, I think it's losing money right now, but. Um, that was the last balance I'm aware of. Thank you. Anybody else have any questions? Thank you, Shelly. Shelly, you hear me? I'm here, yep. Um, oh. Just wondering if there are any formal thoughts on, on that funding. The other option is to move it into um, school choice and make a decision down the road on what to do with that access fund. Can we do? Can we do that? You really want? You're looking for a motion, Darius, for the two suggestions. So we made, yeah, we made the recommendation of doing the the fifty thousand dollars to put into the tennis court renovation project. Just put that forward. We'll do that'll be a line item for. We'll basically open a PO for that for next year. So whatever other funding we need, we'll add to that. Obviously, there'll be other funding because that's going to come in at about hundred and. The original estimate was around 180, so it's going to come in at next year. So it'll be now at 130 ish. Um, and so and then 50 into, you know, we had said, you know, to put it into the uh, capital stabilization fund, but, you know, OPED is the other, um, is another option as well. I didn't, we weren't thinking, as, as everywhere, we haven't been thinking about that for years. <laughs> um, so that's another place to put it. It's just, you know, or you can do nothing with it, and it can roll into roll into school choice as well. You know, the idea is we're trying to take some of those monies that you know build up these other funds so that we can pull from them, rather than just have the catch-all funds of school choice or EMD. Um, you know, but with those numbers, we do need to move that because we don't want it all going to EMD because we don't want to go over the five percent. So, and what normally is happening, you don't have this much excess. You know what I mean? So we have, if we had $50,000, let's say, out of our, you know, people watching our $12 million budget, you know, we would spend it on books or, you know, tables or, you know, for those small kind of items add up um, over time. But when you have this much, you know, we bring it back to school committee because it feels like it's a little bit more than just spending down a little bit. Am I right, Shelly? That was your, that's why you brought exactly. it to that, Yes, it's exactly. A bit more than usual and um, more transparency on that. What was the other thing? Yeah. Besides the tennis court, well, it was to either put in the capital stabilization, Mr. Chair. I'd like to yep. move 40 to be reserved for the tennis courts, 40 for capitalization, and 20 for open. Uh, I, 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 I would the, the thing, Bill, you know, the the the, the um capital stabilization is uh something you know that that we've talked about for a long time too. I'm with you on OPEB, but at the expense of capital stabilization is really tough because we haven't been able to get it started because there hasn't been like something like this where money at the end of the year shows up. Um and and we we got to get to best practices as a school and that means an ordinary budget and a capital budget at town meetings and the, you know and and it's it gets it it gets easier to pass stuff at town meetings when you're just passing a capital budget instead of all these different line item things. And, well, and I think it also means that we we shouldn't be ignoring a debt that we know exists, which is the OPEB debt. 
I'd rather go to town meeting floor and ask for money for to fix the tennis court than I would for paying a debt that we know existed for in the fund that we created and never put a nickel into. Yeah, I mean, I, I, you know, I know, I know. Uh, we've been, we've been, we've been asking about OPEB at every budget, you, you know, every every budget season. I know. So, so if I could make another suggestion, we could do the fifty thousand for OPEB and fifty thousand for capitalized stabilization. You know, give me another couple of weeks to look at the budget again um, and see where we're at with spending. We we may be able to do some funds. Uh, you know, move it into school choice and and reserve it for the tennis courts in the future. And we re we have this discussion again about that tennis court funding in the fall. Um, but if we really would like to capture the opportunity to tackle that debt and to start building up stabilization, that might be the way to go. I like I like that idea, Shelley. So we so, there, uh, Damien. Because if we do that way. Going to capital stabilization, could it in theory be moved as a tennis court later when we're doing tennis court? I mean, it's capital improvement, so it could be used for anything, right? Correct. It's all right, no one got hurt. <laughs> oh, what was that? <laughs> Some metal shelves in the background fell over. Oh, my gosh. Um, so yeah, Damian, you're right. We that money that gets put into capital stabilization could get used for the tennis courts. I, I don't think we're going to need to pull from that. I think we would want to look at this fifty thousand that we're recommending going into the capital stabilization as the starting of this bigger savings account that the school needs to really focus on. You know, we've been tackling a lot of capital projects between the town and our and other funding sources, and we're at a point where. I'm hearing repeatedly that we need to start saving for future major products, projects, and we know that the boiler's already an issue. Um, I think we are gonna have funds to cover the tennis court in the future, even just looking at our existing school choice numbers as they stand right now. Um, and I don't foresee those numbers dropping dramatically. Um, so I think we would be safe to take the route, uh, the second suggestion that I mentioned, uh, and tackle the tennis court in a separate conversation. So Bill's motion would be 50,000 for capital stabilization fund plus 50,000 for OPEC. Is that your, was that your motion, Bill? It is now. <laughs> Good. And the, other one, the other one never got a second, so it doesn't matter. Okay. I'll, that was my motion. I'll second. Any other discussion? Okay, bear with me here. Lynn? Aye. Phil? Yes. Olivia? Yes. Bill? Yep. Mary? Damien? Yep. Keith? Yes. Missy? Yes. And Chris? Thank you. Thank Shelly, you. You can get back to your ball game. Thanks so much. Have a good night. See you guys in the fall. Yep. Deli. Okay, uh, public comment. There's no public comment unless. Are you guys here for public comment? No. Okay. Just asking. Uh, next, we're gonna we're gonna jump up a little bit. We have a a presentation from eighth grade, and Addison Josephine, right? All right. You know what? If we could, you and I have split and have them come up here so we can get caught up my camera. So. Yep. You guys ready? Come on over here. So we're going to have you come up to the front here just because the microphone's right here, and then you can see that the viewers at all across the nation can watch you. <laughs> Bless you, Tom. Um, so welcome. Oh, 
So um, whenever you're ready, we can jump right in. Do we have a slideshow? Okay. Have? I'm not sure. I don't know if the slideshow, I don't know if you have it or. I don't have it. I don't Mr. Linus, Linus, do you have it? So I have the one that they initially sent me. They said they were going to send me another one. So if you, do you guys want me to send you the one that you sent me originally? I can send that to Mr. Modesto right now. Yeah, that one. Okay. All right, bear Thank with you. me one second, Darius. You're sending that to me to present? Yes, I mean, unless right. you want, do you want me to try to, uh, do you want me to try to present? <laughs> <laughs> now with the confidence you just said, no. <laughs> All right, give me a second. So I'll log into the meeting from here. What's your question? Uh, it's recipe. That's me. Last name? Uh, Joyce. Joyce? What's it? Did you send it? George, did you send it? You're mu muted. Muted. So I just sent it to you, Darius. All right. Okay, so in we are both in eighth grade. And we have a civic action project that we had to do to try to make a change in our community or in some way. And so we chose to address sexism in our school. We decided to take action against the normalized and casual sexism in school. Is it dark? Or... Yes, yes, dark. <laughs> it... It's dark. These things can range from the lack of women and women's history taught in the class to jokes heard in the hallways. We both believe, yeah. We both believe that our school, though better than most, doesn't often cover sexism, how to deal with it in women's history. We have found that there is an unbelievable low amount of women's history taught in our curriculum. In the survey that we sent out to the seventh and eighth grade, about 54% of students said that women's history is not taught enough in our school. We have noticed that because of the lack of information shared, people haven't been taught that this is a form of oppression and should be taken as seriously. Students have been brought up on stereotypes and harmful ideas promoting sexism, misogyny, and overall the prejudice against women. Our goal is to change the curriculum to include more female historical figures. And we thank you for the time you have given us and we hope you learn more about this topic and how it appears in our school. Our findings, lack of female representation in school standards. According to Smithsonian's calculations, 737 specific historical figures, 559 men and 178 women, or approximately one woman for every three men, are mentioned in the standards at, in place as of 2017. 53% of mentions of women's history fall within the context of domestic roles, with women's rights and suffrage making up only 20% of mentions. These quotes are showing how few women are represented in schools. 53% of 178 is approximately 94, while 20% of 178 is 35. 
129 of the 178 women taught are either in domestic roles or suffrage. 49 women are in other fields, like science and math. 49 out of 737 historical figures are women in other occupations. And the quote and the image that you see are from the Smithsonian Magazine. Uh, and just to clarify, this is a quote that we found from another resource. Um, in the past, when I observed, observed primary grade classrooms, a good number of girls would routinely raise their hands, share their opinion and ideas, and volunteered to read out loud. Now I observe seventh and eighth grade and high school classes, and there is a change that starts around seventh grade. Female students are much quieter and less outspoken than they were in primary grades. During puberty, children have heavily influenced by the traditional gender norms amplified in pop culture, education, education research has found that the stereotypes of assertive male and passive female are often reinforced in our schools and in our very classrooms. This was in, extremely interesting to read about, considering it occurs at our school as well. Most girls won't raise their hands on their own, and when they're called on, they try to be as quiet as possible. A lot of it does come from the media, but there's also a fact that students will get laughed at and jokes will be made. Everything a woman does, she will be judged for it. She can't do a problem on the board in math class without hearing snickers in the back or kids poking fun at the way she is standing, the way she was writing, or the way she did the problem. This is one of the several reasons why we need change in our, in our school. We sent out a survey to the 7th and 8th grade classes asking their opinions and thoughts on some of the following matters. If we are taught about women's history enough, if they see students engaging in casual sexism at school, if they see teachers engaging in casual sexism at school, and if they think sexism as a whole is an issue at our school. In the next few slides, you will see what the seventh and eighth graders of our school answered to these questions. So the first question that we asked was, do you think women's rights and women's history are addressed enough in our school's curriculum? The majority of people said that no, it is not addressed enough and we should learn more about it. And, and a good amount of people say that it's addressed just the right amount with a few people saying that it should be focused on, focused on less. Um, but having it more than half saying that we should learn about it more is a pretty good indicator. Our second question was if we note if you noticed fellow students engaging in casual sexism slash misogyny in school. About half said that they don't see it too often, only sometimes. But right right behind that is yes, I see it often. This tells us that the majority of people do see it, if only sometimes. The next question that we asked was, do you notice any staff members engaging in factual sexism slash misogyny in school? Now, um, guessing by a lot of the comments that we got, we think that the most of the people who say they see factual sexism slash misogyny in teachers is by them treating girls and boys differently in classes. For example, only calling boys or telling them to be quiet, but let the girls continue to talk. This question we more asked as we were curious what we would find. And what we did find was most people said that they didn't see it, which is a really good thing. But some people did say that they find it um, sometimes, and a couple of people did say that they see it often. The final question was if they saw sexism as an issue at school. The majority of people said it was like, eh, sort of an issue. And about a quarter, of, about another half, said, yes, this is an issue. And a quarter said, not an issue. Uh, these are a couple of the comments that we that some of the students had said like it depends if it's joking or not sexist jokes are funny but being actually sexist just isn't really okay one question that kind of shocked us sexism is a very bad topic that nobody likes to talk about schools for learning about real education which that one interesting um i think that casual sexism that takes place in our school needs to, needs to be addressed more and stopped and I don't see it very often, but when I do, I see, when I do see it, it does get up. I do get upset when it does come up. There are just jokes like I think that women aren't smart and stuff like that. 
I don't un I understand what those jokes are because <laughs> well I understand that those those jokes are because they hear oh, it from sorry. others and they think that that's how they should act but I just find it rude that they do it Overall, we have come to the conclusion that sexism is not taught or addressed enough in our school. More than half of the students here at Frontier think that women's history is not taught enough. Most students see fellow peers engaging in casual sexism, and even a few students see teachers engaging in it. We suggest adding more female figures into the civics and social studies slash world history curriculum. We have talked to a teacher about English, and, appear, and it appears that they try to read books from female authors in the middle school curriculum. Another thing that you could do is try to address sexism more and maybe teach teachers on how to better address sexist comments said in the hallways and teach them how to not be sexist in class, like only calling on the boys or not letting the girls do the work slash problems. And here's our work cited page. So if you have any questions. <clears throat> well, uh, you, you was, oh, go ahead, Phil. So, yeah, I'll go ahead and ask questions. My, uh, my name is Phil, Phil Cantor. I represent the town of Conway. And I, I thought your presentation, you two are amazing. Um, thank you. Yeah, th that was, you're, you're just uh, elo eloquent and right on the money. This is, this is what, the, the things you're talking about are huge issues, it, a huge set of issues in my household because, you know, my, my child graduated from Frontier a couple of years ago and um, th th this was topic number one during her, uh, frontier of time and um you know that 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 there there's sort of like two parts to what you're saying there's sort of the w w what the curriculum is what the teachers are doing and then you know what what really struck me is the comment about the, the feeling that you're up at a blackboard and people are snickering and making uh judgments and and comments about your appearance and and i always struggle i always you know what can we do better to like create a world where everybody can participate freely without like you know w without half the people being judged on their appearance uh, uh, in so many different ways large and small and do you have any thoughts about that um uh, <laughs> well i just feel like that's something that we noticed because it has happened to us as well as a lot of other students one thing just to sort of add a comment to that side that i noticed if you walk down the hallways like in between classes and stuff you will see girls i like to call it the spider-man where they're down like on their knees or like squatting some way when getting their stuff while the boys are like reaching down to get their stuff which i noticed is really interesting given the fact that sort of we have in our minds subconsciously sort of started having these actions where that seem at, like will seem sort of normal, but when you take it into the bigger picture, really aren't. And yeah. <laughs> yeah, the good, keep, keep at it. Good luck. You're on the right path. Just question, keep questioning. Keep it, keep agitating. Mm -hmm. Thank you. Thank you for the question. Sure. Anybody else have any questions? Yes, sir. Great job, you guys. Um, awesome for tackling such a, an important topic. But what's what's next for for this? Do you guys have another step as part of this, or is it this presentation? And um, we don't really have another step laid out. This was sort of where That's we okay. got to, yeah. mostly because school is ending and stuff. <laughs> So I, I guess that's kind of my question for us or the, the group as a whole is kind of th this is great stuff to bring up and it's awesome for us to yeah. give you some acknowledgement on the work that you did because it's, it's a really, really good to bring up these topics, but it's important to do something with yeah. this stuff too. So yeah. that's where we, we have a role in, in taking that next step. And I guess that's my question for the group is, as a whole is where do we go from here? We do plan on advocating for it like in our like regular time. It's just that this was like our last project of the year. Yeah. We didn't yeah. know what to do next. <laughs> <laughs> but, and and this, we should pick up on this, right? Yeah. Yeah. I was sort of thinking, unless things change, I know that the seniors have a civic action project also maybe coming back to this then. 
I was just going to say, like, thank you. I want to say thank you, first of all, for doing this. And um, I have two girls who went who want to spend this year. And this has been very much on their mind and um, has been an audible discussion around the our house um, as well. So thank you for bringing that up. Um, and I was going to say, you know, I know that there are a lot of awesome ways that Frontier offers um, doing more um, of these kinds of, you know, researching yeah. and um, survey kind of projects along and it would be interesting for me personally um to see you know if you follow this along you know yeah. as your time at frontier and mm -hmm. produce these change you yeah. notice different things so you know, that could be a long term yeah. sort of thing i think a, a a very quick thing that we can do is that you know, we just talked about the equity audit that we signed up to do last month it's mm -hmm. going to happen next year and part of that audit is looking at gender and looking at achievements in in access and that kind of stuff and to this committee can re just request and i'll make sure that sarah makes that as one of the emphasizing points that we're asking this um you know, the data that they're collecting and coming back to us so we can apply data to how we're going to make changes you know um, i think the other thing we can also do is talk to formally ask the, the social studies department to look at the data that you know presentation yeah. just gave here so they can look at what they're doing as well um, and start to reflect on that too. It's kind of really just, I'm trying to think of real action points we can take yeah. from here. It is a longer kind of thing. And there is, as uh, Phil had pointed out, there is these two kind of tiers of issues. There's, you know, I have a daughter in the middle school and there's this, you know, the society kind of things, which is a much larger thing. So there's also, what can we do? We talk about curriculum and how teachers are handling things in classrooms and that kind of stuff. Those are things we can start to look at immediately. And I also think that culturally we have to make it so that those comments that say that i understand that it's just jokes yeah. like that's that's not okay that's yeah. not a, it's not okay yeah. for this to be it's just a joke yeah. and so we'll let that pass and that comes into play with a lot of the other work that we're doing in, on equity and so culturally i think that we need to make sure that it's not just the students that are yeah. not stepping to that space of it's a joke and so it's okay but also that the administration and the teachers not just don't do it, but also feel comfortable stepping up to yeah. make sure that they are reinforcing to the students that that's not an okay way to let that pass. Yeah. And that's how yeah. we change culture here, which will then have a bigger impact. So a nice job. And I think I would echo what Superintendent Modesto said about um, it's climate, school climate, and it's also curriculum and content. Yeah. And I think it's also, this is, a larger conversation that's never had any easy answers, but expanding it just beyond social studies in English. How do you yeah. provide advocacy and for people seeing themselves reflected in also math, science, PE, and all the other content areas? Good job. Thank you. Thanks yeah. for coming. Good work. Thank you. Thanks. Ken, we're going to move you up for the superintendent's valuation. They got to unmute yourself. Okay. <laughs> Can you hear me? Yep. Okay. Very good. So, did you want me to start? <laughs> yeah, go ahead. Okay. Good evening, good evening, everyone. Sorry to not be there in person, but uh, I was on back to back to back meetings and thought I'd go home and try and grab a bite to eat here along the line. So um, I had a, I had a chance to uh, work with Bob on reviewing the uh, survey results uh, for the uh, teachers of uh, superintendents evaluation. Um, we received uh, 21 of, uh, responses to the um, superintendent evaluation request. That's 84% of the members of the various school committees. That's 21 out of 25. Um, and I had sent an email. I don't know if it made it to all of you or if all of you saw it before this evening's um, meeting. But I, in it, there's a summary chart. There were, there are four. 
um, overall standards, uh, instructional leadership, management and operations, family and community engagement, and professional culture that uh, we evaluated Darius on uh, for his performance over the past year. Uh, there's, I, I provided a breakdown of the um, percentages of uh, <clears throat> the ratings by the various people on, that completed the uh, evaluation. There, they can, there are five um, standard, I mean, five ratings that you could give. One is exemplar, another is proficient, then there's needs improvement, um, unacceptable, and um, not rated if uh, someone felt they didn't have enough information to, to complete the particular standard in question. On these ratings, um, under instructional leadership, 57.1% of respondents rated Darius as proficient, 38.1% exemplar, and 4.8% uh, needs improvement. Management and operations, uh, it was 57.1% of respondents rated him at exemplar, and 38.1% proficient and 4.8% needs improvement. Family and community engagements, uh, which consisted of four different uh, questions that you would answer. 33.3% rated Darius as exemplar, 57.1% proficient and 9.5% uh, needs improvement. And finally, under professional culture, 38.1% of respondents rated Darius Exemplar, 52.4% said proficient and 4.8% um, needs improvement. And then there were 4.8% uh, was <clears throat> not rated. So based on these standards, Bob and I discussed, uh, we felt that <clears throat> didn't feel we, uh, it was pretty clear that the overall rating for Darius in this past year should be um, proficient for the year. Um, it's been another long, laborious year. Uh, COVID certainly continued to reign supreme for much of the year. Uh, the responses within the administration, the faculty and staff have been uh, really really strong to the year and uh, you know trying to keep up with all that was going on on the health front not to say uh, um, what also needed to take place on curriculum and teaching within the classrooms now that we were back in the schools uh, so bob and i have put together a recommendation that uh, we recommend the committee rec recognize Mr. Modesto's performance for the 2021-22 school year as proficient based on the evaluations received from committee members. Uh, we are confident this recognized this is the continued strong leadership provided by Darius for the Union 38 and Frontier Regional School Communities and administrators, faculty, staff, and families. So, and I'm, I'm happy to take any questions or Whatever. Well, you know, I, I, I just, I, you know, t t to me, this year and last year should have an asterisk next to it, <laughs> you know, in, in terms of the rating. You know, if this was any kind of proper sports league, you know, th th there'd be an asterisk next to this rating. And, um, you know, b b the, the, the pandemic degrees of difficulty that, th that this job has, has incurred, like th the past two years, is this off the charts? And I, I think what is proficient in, in a regular year should be upgraded to exemplary in, in a crazy pandemic year three of pandemic year. And um, that just that just the job this year was so much harder than what he had every right to expect the job to be when he signed on to it. And um, we the, there there has to be an acknowledgement of that in some way. That's I don't know. So I I think he's amazing. I, 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 and and I, I think he's done a fabulous job. And if we could, my recommendation would be to it if it weren't illegal 
we should try to extend his contract to the rest of his natural life. But, um, <laughs> uh, <laughs> at, at, you know, I, so that's my take. Thanks, Phil. Yes. Always, always with a kind word. Well, anybody I, else want to? <laughs> Thanks. I, I, mean, I, I think I would echo what Phil is saying. When I look between proficient and exemplary, it's like 90, 90 95% in every category. Given what has happened over the last two years, it has been the most difficult time to be in leadership of public education. Um, I think that there just needs to be something more than even proficient. Anybody else have any questions? I just have an actual question. Um, and I'm, I'm going to um, uh, abstain because I'm from the country. But um, do we use, often get the actual comments as a, as a committee to look over? Or because in the, in the summary, we, we get like what you what you all think is, yep. is like, like fun, but what, right. what, what jumps out to you might not be what jumps out to me. And so I'd be just interested uh, in actually seeing the, the right now comments in the future. Ken, do you yeah. do you have do you have the public com the comments from the I individual? I I mean I have you, comments that I could certainly read, but they. I, and I, I'll, I'll say that I've been I've been playing with the Google Forms um, software here, trying to figure out a way. I wanted to download the the overall summary of responses, which is just um, a breakdown of the votes on each of the 20 or 19 standards, and then an overall rating breakdown and attached to that are all the comments that various people made under each of the um, four major standards. But I try as hard as I could, I couldn't get it down into an, Acrobat, an, an Adobe Acrobat format. The only format I have it in is the Google Forms that includes the individual um, individual evaluations by every member, which I didn't think people would want being shared um, as, and, you know, quite as public a forum as that. So I couldn't figure out a way to separate them. So I was unable to, I mean, I'm in the document right now. I wish there was some way I could share it. Well, maybe we can, yeah. Yep. And I think when we fill it out, it says that it's a matter of public record. So we should, find a way to make that accessible. Make it have it. Like I, I have I, that I, as a matter of public practice. I know, I, so I, know I, go, I go around in circles on it because I'm just, I, I'm not sure how committee members, I, I guess we, I would, I would think to take a vote and say, hey, does everyone want, want their, you know, results to be seen or how do you want to approach it? So I apologize for that. Well, um, we we used to do it, Ken. You remember when we used to just pa hand out all the evaluation forms and everybody used to see everything? And we switched it to this way. And I think there's wisdom in the way that this is done because this this is great for the whole world to see when the evaluations are really good and strong. It's not so great for the whole world to see when the evaluations, um, when, when there's a lot of pro evaluations that point out um, – you know things that, yeah, you know, and that the way that the, the way that we do it now. So this summary is is posted, and it you know, but the, and the evaluations themselves they're on file, and if there's a concerned citizen, they can put in a documents request. They're public record, but it takes one step extra to 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 come into the building and look at this stuff, and and it's it's a good way. It's a kind of a balanced way to do evaluations so that. Um, you know, because there's an element to it that you, it's one thing that, you know, you're always airing your d dirty laundry to the extent that it's public record, but it's another thing to automatically just post the stuff to post your dirty laundry on your own internet site is a whole nother thing altogether. So, um, I, I don't know. I, I kind of like the way it's doing it. And especially when, you know, when, when you're putting together systems to do evaluations, it makes sense to do it this way. So, I, I, I mean, I guess if the committee is asking for access to those, sure. should we at the very least make it easy for us to access those and 
yep. to one another layer for the average person right. to come in and access it. But it sounds like at least having the ability to give these to people to review is a matter of public record. We're, we're like voting on it. So okay. So, you know, yeah, yeah, yeah. And, well, I, Wait, I, I guess my, my other thing, I don't, I don't I, you do a great job, but I think that there's other benefits if there's some spaces, especially during a time of intense stress, like a pandemic and trying to navigate all this stuff. <laughs> there's great praise in making it through that. And so the strengths are highlighted, but there's also some weaknesses that get highlighted. And so sometimes things that need a little work get amplified a little bit during these kinds of stress too. And I think that there's some benefit in, in being mindful of that and not just, you know, we can <laughs> throw praise on you. Uh, but I think there's also some benefit for everybody to have a balanced approach that when when we have these pandemics and we have rough years, that there's there's some some space that you need to look at on, on both sides. Nobody should ever have no one's a, perfect. Uh, nobody should ever have an evaluation that's like all fives. Like that, Right. Nobody, nobody does that. You should always have some space for growth. And, and I think and, it's worth noting that too. Yep. I I don't disagree. I um I I wish there was some way to I, can I share that? I I don't have the document control, so I can't easily share it. I just uh, it was sent to me and, and shared with me. So um <clears throat> I I it wasn't like I could send it along. I mean, I, I don't, I'm kind of Google sharing uh, a Neanderthal when it comes to how to manipulate things. But I, I, you know, did try to figure out a way to get you this document that I'm in right now. Um, I mean, it and, can be downloaded. and I didn't succeed. Yeah, I mean, it can be downloaded into an Excel format and someone who's, you know, has Excel expertise could quickly create organize that information i think that's i think that's what has to be done because the it is uh, the forms things is clumsy you have okay. to go you have to kind of go through each one individually it doesn't kind of bring it it brings together some but not it, it just isn't clean it's not the best programming that's what we had at the time right. so or uh, now um so you know we could i could have somebody in my office clean it up and send it out to everybody so you have it all He's technically, a, he's technically a Christian. Oh, okay. <laughs> <laughs> I couldn't hear that. <laughs> you're, you're either a collaborator or you're a participant. Right. He's a so I don't know what he's speaking to. About. Um, but it is, it is clumsy in the sense of you have to go through. It doesn't give you. And he's right in that we're being asked to vote on something that's summarized for us without having the actual information. That's, kind of I have a question. that's true. Do all, do all the school committees have to have the same rating? Uh, no. Did all the same? Um, did someone just say, did all the co school committees have the same ratings? Yeah. Do we all have? I know. I think it's. I think it's recorded five different ways to the state. From the five different schools, from the five different districts, you each send it. So this is what this is for. It goes to the state. Right. So um, I'm just saying that. Well, I know you had lost me. But <laughs> the, uh, yeah. Um, so yeah, I mean, I think you can have different readings in different schools. So I wondered if our our committee, if our data supports something more than proficient, or Huh. Right. Oh. interesting because there's a yeah yeah right. yeah yeah but, um, maybe something to look into next 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 year when we well oh, next part of the, right, next part of what we about the yeah. Yeah. as it, as i started down that rabbit hole that you were just asking about um <clears throat> i can you know i I, I didn't think I had time to try and figure out each of the five individual school committees and then try and present an overall, you know, that we would, uh, Bob and I would be able to present anything coherent to each individual committee <laughs> on a on a regional and union basis. So I um, I kind of backed off of that. I, I can say that if 
you know, uh, out of 25 respondents, you know, the vast majority were all um, proficient and exemplar in their ratings. And there were one or two instances where people felt there was a need for improvement in it. And I, I, I'm sorry, I didn't mean to gloss over it, but it was mentioned in, in the uh, overall summary that the area of communication and managing of information in this particularly difficult year could have been improved upon. And that's something that was shared last year as well. So while strays, straight, the, the steps were taken and progress was made, there's still a, you know, a feeling that better communication could take place, particularly in, in instances such as the pan pandemic presents where uh, circumstances are changing so dramatically throughout the year. So um, I don't know if I, what's that? Yep. The reason I was asking was just to hear Phil speak of opinion it should be exemplary but I don't think that's something we can arbitrarily do I think we have to have our data match our rating so yeah. that's why I was asking sure um, does anybody else have any questions about the evaluation Keith I, I don't know whether we are tied to using that exact language of <clears throat> efficient exemplary um, it just strikes me that that Saying proficient as our evaluation to me strikes as well you're capable, and that's it. It doesn't really to me. It doesn't with the way the responses look. I think there, there, there's a stronger level of support from the committees, however it breaks down. But I still think there needs to be something that recognizes, like Missy said, that there are areas for improvement. It doesn't need to say exemplary, but we could have some language that said a strong level of support from all the school committees for uh, using something else that. Finds that middle ground between tape or tape efficient and exemplary. But do you submit, you don't submit a narrative, you submit a check a box. Check a box. Check a box. Yeah. So I think this is the this is the part that fills that space, right? That, that you check proficient, but we get the rest of that feedback that fills that other hole. So the rating part is not very efficient. No, they're boxes that the state's going to give us to check off. That's why. Right. Yeah, I mean, I, mean, I hate to tell the right dirty here. secret is you guys did the evaluation after I checked the box last year. So I, I submitted proficient last year because we had not done the thing and I had to submit to the state. The year prior, <laughs> only seven people filled it out. So check proficient and we moved on. So, you know, we're just, it's got um, the box is checking. Thing. That's what I'm saying. Like, and I think this is where I remember when Bill Smith's <laughs> famous line is, when you're not using your job, we'll tell you. You know, um, you know, there is all these kind of different things for feedback, and it kind of, I think it helps remind school members of different areas that I'm in, but also, you know, we do work together in getting feedback along the way and that kind of stuff. There's a formal process and an informal process. So, I mean, I guess there has to be some, and like, what is it used for? You know what I mean? And that kind of stuff. And so there's, especially with five different committees, and that's where you're, you know, we have difficulties within this, you know, this setup of exactly how does it spell out or whatever. You know, I don't, you gave me exemplary, I don't get a bonus. You know what I mean? Um, and you know, I guess needs improvement would be when contracts came up or if it was enough, you could move grounds from, you know, whatever. You know, so I, I don't know. You know, what I mean, there's no clear language of what it's for, but other than to communicate on the different standards, you know, how things are going, you know. And, so, can, can I? So, the, the, just two two thoughts. The, for, first, I, I think I think that the the one the one um, seminar that we went to, I think Darius and I were both in the room at one of the Hyannis conventions, um, the mass convention, and the, that the Desi person in charge of superintendent evaluations was there, and they admitted that when they're sent the annual evaluations from all across the state, they actually just throw them out. They don't save them. They don't do anything with them. And um, there's then there's no statutory use for them. And um, the other thing is that th the language that we use, exemplary, proficient, etc., that comes from the teacher evaluations that that are all used. And 
and and it comes from and the, and the reason that it's weighted so much towards proficient comes from the court case that says you can't use the those uh, exemplar proficient or, or uh, for teacher compensation that um, that 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 so it's every so in in that context the for those those valuations for teachers are all weighted so heavily towards coming up as proficient. So I've always questioned our use of those terms because we don't need to use those words for a superintendent evaluation. We can choose any categories and name them ourselves. Um, and I think we could do a better job than what we're handed from the state because these are this is just the standard language for teacher evaluations and it has never been modified for superintendents, but we should. That's it. Those are my two thoughts. Let's see. So I guess kind of following up on what 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 do we do with if this is just for checking a box in a like a cursory end of the year, we did this and all filled this filled this out. And when I think of evaluations, I think of some reflection of where you have been and some some goal setting of what's the plan for moving forward and how to improve upon where you've been, whether that's here or with other staff that I interact with. So I guess that's my question is, does this just get checked and thrown off or is there some sort of reflection on how well, have things gone over the year and, wh and what are my goals for improving on the space that I've been in? Right, what I was kind of reading for saying that there's no, there's no formal structure as to how that gets drawn. And so that's when, of course, I read and go through it and say, you know, there's this, you know, this the common here, there's a common here, there's a common kind of stuff. Um, and so, but there isn't a formal, you know, goal, when you said goal setting and that kind of thing, you know, tying, and there hasn't been a lot of past practice, I think. So that's also why it's not happening in time. Just make decide one or the other. Um, and then, you, you know, looking at, you know, are the goals or the district goals nothing is depending on what the improvement is you know what i mean if it was like you know, you know skill set versus global you know workings you know what i mean you know those are different things you know, would be addressed differently so but yeah i mean how is that put into the school improvement plans I mean, we, have a, we have a strategic plan and we have school improvement plans and then you know it, and all those things kind of go by the school committee so yeah those should be thought about when we go because I'll be working on that, and we have administrative meetings this summer. We're going to be looking at a strategic plan where we at with all that, and start looking at each principal starts talking about their school improvement plan um, for their schools to bring back to their school to talk about with the people who make up those plans on our own. But you know, they have a like general guidance, and so some of this will go toward that. But I guess since this is a an evaluation of you, like where do you set kind of goals for? You know, like if that happens on all the school, if you have Right, I set the strategic plan for the whole of the five-year. Well, it's a three-year plan, right? Now. But when you plan. look at these evaluations, right. they, go, they go into the strategic plan. You put these into the strategic plan right. for all the schools, depending on right, depending on what the depending on what's being asked, right? Yes, but as like I said, there hasn't been a history of that. You know, what I mean, there's the first year, you know, the first year there wasn't a huge evaluation, and the second year was COVID. Yeah. So, you know, so that's, that's kind of where. I mean, I used to I used to get evaluation at work, and every single year you got one. They would have a folder. They would have all my right. evaluations from the year before. And I mean, there was one thing that I guess we can't teach an old dog new tricks. So I I don't expect. And in my case, whatever the question was, I I'm not going to change just because of that that you're looking for because that's how I that's how I that's how I do it. But they, every year they bring it up saying, have you have you changed at all? And I'll say, I haven't. But in this case, it, it, what I was doing was fine. But they wanted something a little different out of the whole evaluation. It was one thing that used to come up every single year. And, and you know, I just, I didn't know if I was bucking the system or whatever. But, but I had evaluation ahead of it. And we went by it every single year. And it was always one thing. That needs improvement, and and I didn't. I mean, I, I mean, my if, case. If I mean, this is one thing that yeah. always, if there's something that always comes up, I guess my that's part of our, yep. our job is to make sure that there's something that's yep. being done to help to improve that. Yeah. I think after 
getting a few years of the evaluation in Darius's situation, that at least we have something to go by. There's a folder. There's three. There's three years worth of information there for us that he can go by. And like he says, a strategic plan, which is his plan and stuff. Is there other things that need improvement? Yes, we know that. We see it with evaluations and stuff like that. And it's something to work with. I mean, so we can move the meeting along. We just all agree he's doing a great job. And so does that mean I'm getting the motion? Yes, the motion to vote for this and uh, have whatever the first And we have a second. Second. Bob, yes. Lynn? Hi. Phil? I'm going to say no because he was excellent. Okay. Olivia? Yeah. Bill? Yeah. Mary? Yes. Damien? Yeah. Keith? Yes. Missy? Yes. And Chris? Okay. Thank you, Ken. Uh, thank you all. Um, and I'll work to see if we can get the, the, the total package out to you folks to answer some of those questions. So I'll work with Donna to figure it out. <clears throat> I'll see Donna tomorrow and I could talk to her a little bit too, if you're, unless you're going to talk to her. No, you can, you can talk to her. I, I'll try and get in touch with her. I'm not sure if I'm heading out tomorrow out of state okay. again, but, uh, I will I will be in touch with her and and work with she and Darius and others to try and get the document out at least to the other three committees that still have to vote. So thank you all for your time and and your work this year. Let's hope for better things for next year. Have a great summer, everyone. You too. Thanks. Thank you. Bye. Um, student council. I don't think that person's here, right? Student council. Uh, George, you got to principal report i think you sent one to us but anything I, important no i mean just i mean i can just highlight the pieces that i sent to, to everybody and um so once again we had graduation i hope everybody was able to access the photos it was a great time um uh we have a number of retirees this year i noticed that in the packet we uh, had the new the new employees that are coming in so just a few folks that are re retiring this year bill benoy uh, Karen Duda, Sarah, Sandy Spiewak, Lisa Winter, and Karen Zayomek are all leaving us this year. So, um, so goodbye to them. Um, Frontier Boys Volleyball won the Western Mass Championship um, recently uh, against uh, Southwick, um, which is great. And then I had a couple things on there from the last – I was not at the last school committee meeting, so I just wanted to make sure that people were updated about the fact that we've become – we've been – we've um, – Received the grant to become an innovation pathway school. So we're going to be focusing on, on healthcare and manufacturing. That's moving forward with new courses next year. Uh, and we're going to be uh, developing a building a fab lab over the summer. Um, and then we had the Grinspoon Awards on May 4th uh, and to recognize Stacey Chaplin, one of our, our history, uh, one of our science teachers. So, and then I just had some other basic info um, in there. So beyond that, I've got. If anybody has any questions for me, and I notice uh, Chris Christopher White, I'll send you. Uh, I just noticed that I I neglected to send you the report, so I'll send you my report um, tomorrow. I believe we have a Western Mass champion in the girls' track team too. Okay. Thanks, okay. George. Thanks, Bob. Okay. Next, we got some policies to vote on. We want to. You want to go through each individual, or we just want to because we talked about them last time. I think you could, you could go with the uh, as they're kind of broken up. The Section A, the MASC policy, the updates from MASC, Section A. If there's any questions or do them as a okay. Yeah, I was just doing one ind individually at a time. No, just do as a unit. All the A's. Oh. That's how they do it, dear. All right. All well. All the A's. And then do J. So. Okay. Anybody have any questions on policy updates, Section A? If not, how about a motion and a second?
Lynn? Phil? Yes. Lynn did say, I heard her. Yes. Olivia? Yes. Bill? Yep. Mary? Yep. Damien? Yep. Keith? Yes. Missy? Yes. And Chris? Yes. Okay. Policy J. Section J updates. Any? The only thing I want to add, there, there was um, some minor edits made um, and were sent out to folks. Um, I think it came down to, there was a, it said six months when it was 12 months. And um, it was one term that's not preferably labeled. They have to be labeled prescription drugs and storage. You know, it's just, there was, some, there was just some very uh, important, but minor, but important change. It didn't change the substance of it, but it, I guess it did when you say that kind of thing. But um, there's only a few throughout the room that, um, but I just want to say that because it was a difference from yeah. that one that started. <clears throat> Missy, I got you and Mary. Yep. Uh, Bob, Lynn? Yes. <laughs> Phil? Yes. Olivia? Yes. Phil? Yep. Mary? Yes. Damien? Yep. Keith? Yes. Missy? Yes. And Chris. Okay. Next is foundation statement for anti-racism and equality vote. Were there any questions? If there's no questions, how about a uh, motion and a second, please? Uh, yes. Lynn? Yes. Phil? Yes. Olivia? Yes. Bill? Yep. Mary? Yes. Damien? Yes. Keith? Yes. Missy? Yes. And Chris? Yes. All right. Moving right along. Uh, uh, we did the fair share last time, right? Yeah, we just read it. Vote, right. Yeah. So resolution support a fair share amendment. Was there anybody have any questions about it before we vote? Okay. How about a motion and a I'll second? A okay, see. okay, Chris. You're on the, you're on the paper oh, now. now. You're in it now. Lynn? Yes. Phil? Yes. Olivia. Bill? Yep. Mary? Yes. Damien? Yes. Keith? Yes. Missy? Yes. And Chris? Okay. Scholarship account. What did we find out about that $4,000? We are not ready to report back to you. So oh. we've been looking and then she did not have um, our current treasurer did not Okay. We got that done. Uh, Anybody reach out to Bill? Uh huh. Anybody reach out to Bill? About what? Or about the scholarship. You know, I thought maybe that's how the email. Oh no, 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 no she's going through the records. She's going through the records of accounts. I, I was and so curious if, some, if that's how um, that popped up. No, I should call. No. Um, uh, Jesse, COVID testing update, sir. Yeah, so I sent the. Um, um, I sent the memorandum that came out from the state just so there was clarity about where the state was heading next year. Uh, they are providing with, with regards to Russia. <laughs> in regards to um, testing um, for the summer programs and then for um, next fall. So basically, in, in basically in summary, they're providing um, symptomatic testing and home kits for faculty and students during the summer for summer programming. And then the fall, we're on our own. And then to top it off, currently, the, you know, they said you can go to Combi. So immediately, of course, all those, you know, 
all the superintendents immediately go to figure out what's this going to cost and you know just so we can start planning there and you have to buy in massive bulk you have to buy seventy five thousand dollars worth at once you have to buy um I think I wrote it in my superintendent's report there. The number of units you have to buy. 15,000 or something yeah, like that. Basically, if you eat, we'd have to do 83 tests, tests a day um, in order to um, in order to use all of them. And they expire. So the ones that we were sent home right now, people will see, probably see they're like usually a July expiration date. Apparently, they're going to extend those for three months. Um, and I kind of made a joke last me. I don't know how that works. But, um, <laughs> they're just going to tell us that. And so, um, so, but... I also am concerned about buying a bulk of them. So, but right now, the superintendents are talking to each other. I did also reach out to our state rep to see if they can put some pressure on whoever runs combines to see if they can, who has the power to you know, maybe create half pallet orders. Or um, we're also talking with the collaborative about can they buy a bunch and the schools will buy half the collaborative. So we're working our way around it. But it was, it's one of those things where it was kind of like really someone's not thinking steps through on the purchasing. Um, so we'll, we'll work through all that, but there is going to be questions about coming into next year about what kind of testing we're going to put in place. What are we going to pay for in, you know, for, you know, for how long and so on and so forth. So right now, you know, we did order for the summer that, that shipment came in today and um, we ordered as much as we could. Right. Wink, wink. And the commissioner basically said, you can stop. Now. So, you know, you know, we're going to, we order as much as we could within the parameters of our, of our, our programming so we'll have enough to start off the school year um but then we're also going to figure out what kind of testing you know i mean obviously symptomatic testing is going to be um, maybe not obvious you know but you know where are we going with covid and in schools um and it's tough three months off you know i think a lot of things have changed as we've learned one thing we learned about covid is it changes month to month um you know from either variants or non variants or whatever. So I don't know what the direction looks like in the fall. Um, you know, and I don't right now the way Desi's kind of appro approaching it and um, Department of Public Health is kind of approaching it is that it's going to be a regular school year. And if you want to do more testing, all the power to you. Um, so we don't have a plan set up for next year um, yet. Um, some of it is wait and see where COVID is and, and so forth. Anybody have any questions? Missy. I guess I would kind of reiterate that it's all the more important to be upfront and regular with communication. And to be honest, uh, you might as well think about communication with all of the transmissible things as we see buzz about monkeypox. You know, that, that there is some wisdom in having regular communication. And I know that it becomes burdensome to have lots of emails, but regular communication about things means that you're not missing the ball on an upswing of things. And so you catch it at the peak and you have one communication that comes out and then it just seems like things fall. But if you just have regular communication, you can, you can be assured that the community has been updated along the way as things have changed. And then it's not left up to, well, I thought that maybe you didn't need that or maybe these cases weren't rising or maybe it was just a cluster like i've just been giving you regular communication it closes that door for for critique of when that communication should have happened if it's just happening on a regular basis you just know that this is happening so i, I think all that much more important if, as, as some so, of these things go away right so i haven't been because i disagree so you know i sent out a communication that we recommended to people to mass the following week the numbers were about the same. So, or actually they were slightly down. And so I don't want to say they're slightly down because I don't want people to stop losing vigilance. You know what I mean? So what am I saying in these constant emails? And then people stopped reading them. They stopped reading when we started doing the daily thing. So I want to send messages out that says, hey, there's something, there's new information here that I want your attention on. And so that's kind of how I feel because you know, the amount of, I don't want to call it school spam that people get, you know what I mean? All the different, you know, Parent Square, the amount of stuff, especially, um, you know, I, I don't get all the ones from Deerfield, but, um, you know, but like for Frontier, every club is sitting out, hey, this is, you know, every grade level, every, you know, this is going to, this, and there's a part of me, it's kind of like, I, when I send a message out, it's like, there's, there's, there's been a change, there's information here. And so I understand that, you know, maybe I do newsletters for those who would read them, 
Um, I just, I know, I think when I over, over share or over message, people stop reading or they don't, that's my concern there. There's some regular information that you can count on. So I know that when I look at the news, I'm gonna find out what the weather is. And most of the time, it's just gonna be a little report about what the weather is. And there's gonna be some sort of alert when there's a hurricane coming. Right. And I kind of think about it that way. Like this is just, just letting you know. So you know that every third week, you're gonna get an update on what things are looking at. It's just a status report. Mm -hmm. And it might look different if there's an alert. Okay. And, and I think that that kind of bridges this space of, I have some regular communication, so I'm not left up to feel like there's a whim of, I felt like something was happening or something wasn't happening. I've given you regular communication along the way and I'll change the presentation if it looks like this is something that maybe you should prepare differently for. Mm -hmm. So I, I mean, I, I get that, mm -hmm. I understand where you're coming from, but I, I also think it leaves this window of people to have a perception of no communication instead of, I wanted to make sure when I gave you communication, it was the right communication. Right. Does that make sense? Mm -hmm. I agree. And, and I think it's really important as these things start to fall away. Unfortunately, I think it, it's gonna be like any other disease that was out there. It's gonna be until maybe everybody's vaccinated I so, mean, I mean, it, you know, does it does it come down to a mandate from the federal government like they do uh, what on chicken pox and you, all those shots that we got when we were kids? I get regular communication from our preschool when there's a stomach flu going through. And I'm more than happy to get that communication so that I know when somebody's complaining about a bellyache, a belly ache, that it's, maybe I should think differently than this is your, you know, I'm having a rough right. day or whatever. And so I think that it's important. And I think that probably all parents would be happy to know that there's strep going through. So you might think differently about, uh, you know, that, that it really doesn't have to be just COVID related, yeah. that I think this really could just be public health related. Like, and, and I get that from other school systems. So I, I get that, it, that the COVID is going to be around, but I, I think that just just like we have regular COVID updates. I think we could have regular updates about all sorts of things that are going through that that would be helpful. Does that, I mean, could that come from actually like for the high school being George or the elementary school yeah. sending out yeah. an email or something? Some regular to... communication that just says, hey, listen, yeah. we've had we've had an uptick. You don't even have to name a number. Like we've just had an increase in, in stomach flus going around. So just so you, you have an idea, we get that from our pediatrician. We get that from... Lots of other spaces, hospitals regularly provide that information when we should think about seeing patients in a different way. This is, I, I don't think that this is extraordinary information for the school to think about handing out to parents on a regular basis, just a, a general status report of health issues that may be happening in the school. And what Darius was saying about sending out too many things, as we well know, as just our, our school committee that how many times Donna will send out something? Are you going to be here? Are you going to be in person or remote? And I would say three quarters of us always responds to it, but there's always the other quarter that never respond, and it's and it's really too bad that because because it is important. We want to we want to. I mean, just as much as what Darius would send out about COVID is is are, are we going to be here in person or something? Because we want to know, you know, it's. But we get it every month. Yeah. Right. Every and, month. and we know we're going to get it every yeah. month. And sometimes we don't respond because we knew we were going to get it. Right. And and we know what we're going to do. And so I, I don't mm. I don't really I, I don't mind. It doesn't take that much effort to believe it. We all get lots of stuff. I look I look at I look at all and mine, I but I also get a lot of spam. Yeah. A lot of spam from from school stuff. So I just. Anybody else have anything on COVID? Mm -hmm. Was mm -hmm. Huh. Mm -hmm. Well, how about a motion and a second to adjourn? Unless you are you on the? Oh no, just the reports. Um, sorry about that. I don't have fine. anything. I, I don't mind. It. Well, Lynn, did you have anything from the collaborative? I'm sorry, Lynn. Um, just really quickly, just encouraging people to take a look at the collaborative website. 
um, because they have all sorts of trainings going on this summer um, from pre-K to supervisors and, and evaluators. There are lots of different types of, um, of programs that they can tap into that sound really, really good. So I'd like to encourage people to take a look at the collaborative website and sign up for some professional development this summer. Thanks, Lynn. Uh, Darius, you have? Just to announce it out loud, we did hire a new um, nurse leader. Um, and you know, maybe Ms. Wilson was thinking of that would be, uh, be helpful in that area because we might be doing two jobs for a long time. Now. Um, I also want to mention that, you know, Conway had a town meeting on, on Saturday and that sealed our budget, well, we sealed our budget, sealed be prior to that, but we went through six, successfully through all four towns. And so that's important to note. Um, and that um, Samantha Scanlon won the, uh, was awarded the school committee scholarship. Just saying that loud since it was from you folks, whether you knew it or not. Um, but there is that you've given it to the guidance department to do, they have a selection committee to select the, the candidate for that. And that um, I do want to say it out loud as well that Donna Hathaway's um, chosen to retire this summer. And so she's been behind the scenes um, running the kind of running the, the paperwork and the things of this district. And so um, I have posted for a new executive assistant. So if you know anybody out there that's wonderful and wants to work in schools, send her my way. Send her my way, that'd be great. Thank you for correcting yourself after sending send, saying sending your way. Send it her send her your way. Send my way. Thank you. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Good. And I was and I was at graduation handing out 92 diplomas on on Friday with the weather was absolutely couldn't have been any perfect. And there was a picture was taken of Darius, myself, and Ken Parsowski. And I'm the little guy with these two guys. <laughs> I sent it to my family, said, Who's the little guy? And it was me, you know, six foot one, and we got the towers next to me. So but the graduation was great. The kids were great. Maybe a little hiccup with the band at the end, but 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 other than that, I, mean, I, I, I do want to mention that because we have a um, next show's out on leave right now, and um, we're going to be able to pull the band together and had um, some parents and some alumnus that got together and said, "Hey, can we make um, can we make this happen?" And they got out there and made it happen. It was great. Yeah. It was yeah. good. So it was good. Three yeah. community coming together, perfect evening. It was great. Except for the golf balls. Oh, that was hysterical. If anybody didn't know, each kid had a golf ball in one of their hands when they came up and they handed it to somebody in the line. Well, I got I finally towards the end I got a couple, but but George and um uh, Scott were getting golf balls and they were putting them up on this ledge on the podium. And next thing you know, at the end, all you could hear is they were just dropping on the things. And it was like, I mean, this we're talking 50, 60, 70, 80 golf balls dropping on the floor there. So it was pretty, it was pretty funny at the end there. Yeah, it was, it was very funny. I thought that was, I thought that was really funny. Yeah. Okay, now we can make a motion a second. Motion. Okay, let's see. Bob, yes. Lynn? Yep. Phil? Yes. Olivia? Yes. Bill? Yep. Mary? Yep. Damien? Yep. Keith? Yes. Missy? Yes. And Chris? Yep. Thank you, everybody.